Tonight, coronavirus exploding coast to coast. They're trying to stop them from dying. Hundreds dead. Thousands Pain infected. everywhere. Quarantine, um, state of emergency, emergency. Relentless shelter disease. in place. The story of the coronavirus. Online and physical learning will be the new norm. There will be no face-to-face -face classes and sessions until we are assured of the safety of our children and our teachers. I remember being told to wear a mask because there was this virus spreading. This was around February or March. There was no serious news yet over here in Cebu here in the Philippines about the virus being here. But then shortly after that period, the news was everywhere. They only saw this kind of um, virus, a pandemic in movies, but to see it in real life happening, I couldn't believe it at first. I actually was very terrified. People were panicking. I realized that in a snap, someone around me could have the virus. I could get infected by that virus and I could infect the people around me, my family, my friends. I did not like that feeling. It was quite an unexpected thing for me to hear because at the start of the year, it was going smoothly for me. And for the lockdown to be announced also suddenly just just made me feel confused in a way. I feel like I share the sentiment with a million other Filipinos that it was a time of uncertainty. Um, this was something we have never experienced before and if we have, it wasn't on this level or of this magnitude. So um, this, that experience was very jarring because it all came so sudden like we all knew that there was a virus and we didn't know that it would become this worldwide phenomenon no one expected it to happen no one expected something like lockdowns to happen in 2021 having this weird migraine i think that before the lockdown um our parents or teachers would expect so much from us especially that we are young students we are young individuals growing and learning and they see us as the future of our generation having class during lockdown online classes this is something different this is something very foreign for all of us especially us students and it is something that needs time because it is very new it is different and we just sort of need that time to adjust. Hello. Currently, the time is 1.47 a.m. in the morning. I am currently making up late. Uh, I just want to note that it has been very uh, concerning how some Filipino parents, if not some, then most, still expected their students would, their children would deliver a stellar performance in school, given that there was a lockdown. and that everything needs to happen online and one thing about us even as Filipinos is that we are very social beings um, not only if you're Filipino even if you're just a human person even introverts they will even inevitably long for human touch or connection with other with the other people so if you remove classmates teachers and the physicalness of it all then obviously it will have an impact on their learning. I think that's what all parents need to know, is that you should understand and empathize with your child and not pressure them, because that will do wonders. It has for me, because it just makes me motivated to do a good performance in school. And as for teachers, uh, I have been very blessed as well to be under teachers that are so understanding and very empathetic with the, uh, with the current situation. And I think that's what the Philippines needs more of. Because if you understood them and motivated them, they would be more likely to finish up with your class uh, with high grades and a high performance rather than if you just scare them and 
uh, pressure them into doing something for your class that would affect their mental health regardless. I was I was very much I was very much all over my head, and I think that's not the I'm well I think that everybody does feel the same way in a sense, but um, it was quite a struggle to feel lonely. I felt quite lonely with everything happening and being a student at, at lockdown was a struggle because there are so many things I had to get done but don't know where to start because I don't know how to get these things for me to be able to make the certain task for me to do. Hi, so you probably don't care but today I have decided to shave my beard. For the first few months of quarantine, I realized that I had all this time to spend. I really dug into that self-development area in my life. I really wanted to fix my schedule. I wanted to fix my habits. I wanted to remove the bad ones. And it was a phase where I really zoomed out and I tried to look at the bigger picture to see where the things are that I need to improve on. And I also fell into this rabbit hole of quarantine workouts. During that phase of my life, I realized the importance of taking care of your body, our bodies, because this is the only body that we will carry throughout our life. So we really have to take care of it, take good care of it. For the first few months of quarantine, I I would be just hanging around in the house, um, helping out people do house chores. I would always spend my days cooking pasta, cooking pasta, and um, I would be making songs because I love making songs. And I would spend my days reading books that I used to read before because I couldn't go out and buy new ones. Um, I also engaged in a lot of um, of like social media platforms. I would, uh, you know, post things on the internet for the fun of it because there was really not much to do. I don't say this as an art student necessarily, but I noticed that during the start of the pandemic and even until now when there's still a quarantine going on, how we cope during the pandemic was we went to uh, we went to the arts. Um, we dabbled in our lost passions that we didn't necessarily have time for uh, back then and we uh, watched movies and films on Netflix. I really resorted back to art in during the pandemic because it just keeps you grounded, you know. Um, I was a student in STEM before uh, moving to fine arts and taking that time to just remember what I was so passionate about in art was very refreshing. Uh, it just helped me motivate my creativity even more and it, I guess it helped me become a better person in the end. Since it is quarantine and we are spending most of our time isolated and alone, I think that it is inevitable for that feeling of loneliness to creep in. That's why I thought that it was very important for us to communicate with people in some way. For me, that was my family. I spent most of my time, a lot of my time with them and talking to them, bonding with them. And that's what really helped me be sane during this time because I did not feel lonely. For you guys, if you don't have your family with you, you could spend the time talking with your friends online just find a way to sort of communicate with someone because we're humans and humans were made to sort of help each other, to be together. So let's just help each other out and communicate. Well, aside from cooking and aside from making songs or writing songs and reading, I would engage in like a lot of uh, art challenges online that are made by different people. I also started working out, which actually made me feel not just, you know, it manifested like through my body and then it manifested to the way I think mentally and the way I perceived myself. Uh, it made me feel so 
so at ease with myself. Like I felt more confident afterwards and it really helped me throughout the lockdown. One way of coping with the setup is video calling with friends. I have video called with my friends nightly for the entire 2021. So from January to April now. And it has been really good. It has been really good on my health because it reminds me that they exist and that they're still alive and healthy. During my this time, my coping mechanisms really ranged from rekindling my old interests when I was a child and had no time for, even dabbled in some of my very early childhood hobbies. I think the usual answer for this question that also applies to me would be, well, I continue playing the piano. Because I'm an art student, it's very important that you shouldn't limit yourself into thinking that, hey, because I'm good at this, I'm good at X, I should just stay doing X forever. No, um, if you do a wide variety of things, it just in, it just helps you become a better creative person at the end of the day. And you learn all these skills and hobbies that you wouldn't have thought would be uh, beneficial to what your main focus in art is. So aside from playing the piano, I went back to reading uh, books and literature. Uh, uh, like many, I continued practicing my skills and hobbies in art. And one thing that also helped me was music because 2020 was a very good year in music. Um, there have been very many good releases, so that also kept uh, our minds distracted. I'll be honest, I expected or I thought that they would decide to have a gap year or a pause in the school year to sort of have this time to adjust with the situation. But no, they did not and they just pushed through the online class. Maybe I just hope that they've taken more consideration into the fact that not everyone, not every student here in our country are privileged to pursue this online class scenario. Not everyone has access to gadgets or a stable internet connection. That leads to a lot of students not enrolling and being left behind. Since, uh, well, the government wasn't really prepared, I think like the country itself wasn't, well, everyone wasn't really prepared for the lockdown or like the, the pandemic to happen. Um, I feel like it also, it also made it difficult for the government to think through about what to do for education, like the whole system itself. At this point as well, I still don't quite know what should be improved by the government for the said matter. Because like, even until now, they're, quite, they're still quite unsure of a lot of things, so. During the onset of the COVID-19 news, which is way back in December 2019, there should have been a travel ban, travel ban in, uh, enacted effective immediately. But I believe we all know the reason as to why that hasn't happened in our government. So we move on to the next mistake, which was they had a very militaristic approach to the pandemic and the lockdown rather than a medical one. And people found issue with this because uh, they took it very literal that uh, doctors should be the one manning the stations to uh, guard people from going in and out without a proper reason. And that is a very poor use of logical reasoning or a lack thereof. Because obviously what the what uh, the solution medical Hindi militar, uh, what that saying meant was that the government should have been focused on the health of our frontliner workers, of our medical professionals, um, increasing their pay because they are essentially the heroes in this war and we all know that it's one thing to thank them but we also have to pay them that is the sign of gratitude that's the ultimate sign of gratitude to our frontline workers that we treat them with respect which is something the government hasn't done because they prioritize uh, the opinions of military officers even made excuses for um, high-ranking officials it is very confusing to the Filipino layman to see your government say all these things that stay indoors, don't hold these things, and etc. And yet you turn on your television and then you see you see these professionals doing 
the exact opposite of what they're telling the nation. And then this instills like a mindset in the Filipinos that's like, well, they're not doing it, why should I? And then because they're laymen, the government finds it right to punish them for the same mistakes that they did themselves. Which is very telling, but at the same time not shocking. Because we live in the Philippines after all, and the political nature here in the Philippines is questionable, and it gets even more questionable every month that passes. And one may argue with me on this, but it is very obvious you cannot argue with things that have been laid out in front of your very eyes. Something I realized during the online classes is that I really am lucky to even be able to attend it in the first place. Because there are people out there who are struggling because of financial hardships or they don't have access to gadgets or a stable internet connection. And this shouldn't be something that we are overlooking. To those who are able to attend online classes, appreciate it, acknowledge it, and really do your best because there are people out there who dream of doing what you're doing right now. Acknowledge this privilege and do your best and do not overlook it. I honestly um, am thankful and grateful that I am able to still continue my education and that I am currently um, I am currently having or attending online classes because I am quite I am privileged enough to be able to afford education at this time although there there are so many people who couldn't or there are so many people have to think through about um, whether or not it's a good option to attend classes at this time would it be would it be financially um, re uh, reasonable even if there are so many things that an online education could not do compared to when you are there on face to face but I do realize that online classes are quite difficult compared to face-to-face -face classes because I'm a person who personally likes um, having to see something like visualize like really there in front of me because my my attention span is really really bad one thing that we, uh, I really reflected on while having the online class set up is how used we are to the government not treating us properly and how we have to fend for ourselves. And this is very sad, especially for those who are in lower income tax brackets. Like public schools in the Philippines, usually they hold the brightest minds in the country. And to see that during this pandemic, they are the ones that have been suffering the most in terms of education, it's very anti-poor because Though it's good that private schools are listening to the needs of their students and adjusting to the needs of the students accordingly, the public schools, the government should have been the one fighting for them. But yes, we all know how that works out. And some, lots of students across the Philippines had to drop out um, or take, take gap years just because they couldn't imagine either schooling in this situation or that their parents had to have been laid off their jobs and couldn't uh, sustain their tuition fees anymore. As private school students that still get to live comfortably inside our air-conditioned rooms, even amidst online classes, it is very important that we still speak for the students and that when we speak as a Filipino student, we're not only speaking for ourselves, but we're speaking for all the less fortunate students who wanted to go to school but couldn't. Uh, we're not only studying for ourselves or for our families, but we're also studying for all the, all the poor children who had to drop out because they couldn't go to school. We're studying not only for the people we love or for our career in the future, but we're also studying for those who couldn't. So I really had this time to inspect my life. Again, zoom out and look at the bigger picture. And maybe quarantine did not change me, but it made me realize who I truly am. And that's something to be grateful for. I honestly have grown a lot as a person before the lockdown, during the lockdown, and now. And I think it's because I have I've had so much time for myself and I have had a lot of 
times where I had to think all to myself and trying to find solace all through it all because not just the lockdown itself it's it was quite it wasn't keeping anyone sane and it was already harder for people who were battling through so many things in life before it happened and I think that I personally also have went also had so many things that was going on in my life but um, I feel like I could say that I am stronger now mentally um, although I still get shaken up on a lot of things but I see things in a different perspective now I am more grateful I am more thankful I treasure every minute every hour every second everything certainly I have not been the same person that I've been before the pandemic though I consider myself uh, a very politically aware person, I realized how I was looking at it through a very different lens. And I realized the importance of awareness of social issues, especially at this time. And some people choose to stay apolitical, which is very sad because when you stay apolitical uh, during these times, you are just wasting your voice for those who couldn't speak up. And However, in terms of how I was how I was as a student, uh, it's a very different story because before the pandemic, I was a STEM student and I did not like it because I purely took STEM for convenience since it was just near my house, the facilities to cater for STEM. I always wanted to take art. Now that I get to take what I am very passionate about here in college, that was a very motivating factor for me to do very good in my studies because it was something that I really enjoyed and it's something that didn't feel like schoolwork. It felt like something that I was working on so I could be a better creative in the future. I think that's what really needs highlighting is that especially during this time, it is very important to take what you are passionate about and to take what you really see yourself doing in the future because in this time, there are millions of students across the Philippines who couldn't take what they wanted to study or couldn't even study at all. So it would be doing a disservice to them if we didn't do our best while in this setup. However, at the same time, it is important to also give yourself breaks. Um, you cannot be in tip-top shape all of the time. And that's okay. That's very okay. What is important is that you are living, you're still breathing and that you still find all the reasons in life to continue living. I know it's very hard to be a student in this setup because with all the injustices you're facing, you feel as if this will be the country that I will be living in, that I will be working for and I will be serving in the next 25 or so years. And it gets very tiring. I know because I have been, I have been there. It gets very tiring to think and at the same time to continue doing works for submission that feel purely like for submission. So what's just important is that remember that you are still human. I think that's what defining statement that will serve as a bottom line for everything I've said is that remember that you are still human. You are not programmed to do task A, task B, task C successively. Give yourself a break, recalibrate, remember what you what you are here for and go back to it once you feel like you want to do it again. Because forcing yourself into doing things that you don't like will not be of service to your mental health. And to all students, uh, including me, I think that's a very important reminder, is that you just give yourself a break and remember you are human. You cannot be a superpower that will help all the marginalized groups here in the Philippines or the racism that occurs in uh, other countries or the war-torn areas. Just remember you are human. You're not the one in power and don't feel like you have you are going to take the responsibility for those uh, in power that did not do their job well. Just keep studying, take, keep taking breaks, and remember that you are human.